You read the title. If you like this movie, then you already know what you're getting into. If you came just to dislike and leave without hearing me out, then go ahead and do so. Now, is Inside Out a bad movie? No. Is it one of Pixar's best, though? No. Is it one of Pixar's worst? Uh, kinda. Notice how I said one of the worst, not the worst. Cars 2 is still a thing. Anyways, this movie revolves around Riley Anderson and her family as they move and adjust to living in a new town. But that's about only 15 minutes of the plot. The rest of the movie is sort of a frenemy road trip movie as joy and sadness get lost and spend the rest of the time trying to get back to headquarters. And that's honestly pretty much it, not a really filled out plot. But believe it or not, this is the least of the movie's problems. In fact, one of the big problems is just how the movie is set up in general. The concept of the movie is just so unoriginal and flat. Usually with Pixar movies, they develop them heavily. Think about Monsters, Inc. They didn't just ask, what if the monster in your closet was actually a nice guy? They also asked, why is the monster coming through your closet in the first place? Where did it come from? Or with Toy Story, they didn't just ask, what if toys came to life? They asked, what does playtime mean to toys, or what happens when a toy gets ripped? But with Inside Out, it's just, what if your emotions had emotions, and it just feels like a silly gimmick, there's nothing else to it. The way they set up personifying your emotions really limited the movie and made Riley feel like more of a robot than a human. They even use a control panel, and when they lose control near the end of the movie, they even say, we can't make Riley feel anything anymore. It makes it really hard to relate and sympathize with Riley because we know she's just a machine controlled by these little guys. Like there's this scene where Riley is about to slide down a rail, but she gets depressed and decides not to. She takes three steps and then decides, oh, I'm gonna slide down it anyways, Wee! because the emotions were fighting over control. No one does that, not even preteen mood-swinging girls. It makes it seem like Riley doesn't have her own free will, like a robot. If they really, really wanted to go with the control panel route for their movie, why not, instead of however Riley feels being determined by whoever's controlling the panel, they instead have whoever's in control determined by how Riley's feeling. Kind of reverse it. So, Riley isn't sad because sadness is controlling the panel. Sadness is controlling the panel because Riley is sad. See what I'm getting at? You could have so many more story and emotion possibilities with that. Like, imagine Joy trying to take over when it's Sadness's turn. It would basically lead to Riley faking her optimism to hide her depression. Lots of people really do this, and I think it would help them cope if they went that route with it. But speaking of Joy, she is also the worst, and it doesn't help that she's the only character in this movie that gets some sort of quote-unquote development. She is one of the most self-centered control freaks I have ever seen in fiction. All she does is doubt Sadness and put her down the entire movie. Even after Sadness impresses her twice, Joy was still willing to leave Sadness behind just to protect the core memories. And it's not just Sadness either, it's the same thing with Bing Bong. When Bing Bong is upset and crying, Joy doesn't even care how he feels. She just goes, Okay, Bing Bong, show us the train station. We gotta get those core memories back. You could try to defend her and say, oh, she just doesn't understand how sadness works. But later on in the movie, when Bing Bong is being captured by the dream police, she doesn't even care again. And this has nothing to do with feelings. She just sees Bing Bong getting captured and locked in a door and says, oh no, there go our core memories. And she's like this the entire time until the hashtag feels bait, where her development is like a light switch and just flickers onto a different personality. Oh, now you care about Bing Bong. Oh, now you think sadness is useful. Then after the tear bait, they just go, oh, we made the viewers cry. We can stop caring now. And then Joy just bullcraps her way back to headquarters in like four minutes. Yeah, if you thought some of Coco's plot resolutions were kind of jank, you haven't seen anything yet. There's plenty of other stuff I could pick at too, like all the humor being hashtag relatable fodder. But I think you've heard quite enough by now. This isn't the worst movie made by Pixar, but I really don't see why people think that this movie is when Pixar returned to its former glory. Inside Out gets a C minus. <laughs>